everybody, this is Caesar with Smell Engine Velocity, and it is baking hot outside that I put a tent up above me. A little tarpy thing to give me a little, a little bit more space to work with. Uh, today I am working on the Honda Ruckus, and <laughs> it's, it's the, I've had these parts for probably over six months now, and I finally got the last piece. Thank you very much, just for show, for finding me a replacement part that no one else could find. Uh, which, by the way, this replacement part is now available on his website. So if you need it, also, it is available. But anyways, let's take a look. Something's missing. Da, 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 da. I removed my front wheel. And come to find out that this one was like this. This was backwards. So now I will flip it the right way. This one is the right way already. Uh, I have to remove the drum bake adapter. Oh, nope, it's off. And check and see if my front fender still works with the discs, but we'll see. And uh, there's the fender. And here's the wheel. I already went ahead and used the tools to remove the tire which was very hard. Uh, I pressed the bearings. Um, I'll show a clip here. Uh, I went ahead and went over to the shop and used the uh, hydraulic press. I uh, used the hydraulic press to push the bearings in on both sides, uh, flatten and evenly, uh, without messing anything up. I didn't want to use a hammer or anything like that um, because it's kind of a sensitive piece. If you mess up that bearing, then it won't roll right or you could get a bad bearing but anyways back to the wheel um i have this ncy wheel that has a hub built into it for the disc wheel um the tire is good it's still 90 90 but um i didn't, I didn't have money to buy any tire uh and then we're gonna go ahead and mount this now this if you can help it pay someone to take this tire off and put the new one on, especially if it's a 9090. Look how small that sidewall is. It was tight. Uh, I did it inside the house and I was jumping on it. I used copious amounts of Windex. Um, and then to beat it, I sprayed Windex all on the inside once I got both sides in. Now don't make it, I don't wanna make it sound like that was easy, but it took forever. Uh, finally got both sides in. They didn't sit in the seat, but I sprayed lots of Windex in there and then hit it with the compressor. Now this stem, if you have a new wheel, it does not come with this stem. Hold on. All right, compressor came on. It does not come with this stem. So I went over to Firestone and uh, showed them my wheel and they did this for me for free. I'm not gonna say that everyone will do it for free for you, but just keep in mind, you have to have a special tool to put this in. It is not easy, and you cannot take the old one out and put it in here, it will break. It's designed to go in and stay in. So, the next part of this horrible process, look, I'm sweating all over the place. Uh, it's not horrible, I don't wanna say that it's horrible, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start taking the, uh, the, the stock brake off the handlebar and then I'm gonna go ahead and mount the new one and then run the hydraulic line. Um, I won't do the, uh, the, the brake light switch just yet. I'll do that last. Uh, run the hydraulic line through the battery box, have it come out the side. Uh, once I'm satisfied with that, then we'll work on putting the disc on the wheel. Uh, I got some advice. I'm gonna go ahead and try some of that advice. But anyways, let's go ahead and take that uh, stock control off well it's not even stock anymore the uh it's just one brake lever anyways let's take it off and make progress
right, so here's the master cylinder on the bars. I got it to match what I, I like it when I pull it down and it's flat on here. And then uh, I ran the, the hose, which kind of a little bit confused on, but okay. Um, it, it's too close to be facing down, so I'm just facing it up right now. And then it can go over easy down into here to the front. Um, so I think I'm good here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna zip up the battery box or anything. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, start tooling around with the front tire. So I'm gonna do this off camera because you guys don't need to see me messing around with stuff like that. Anyways, let's get to that. Okay, well, everybody, it has been a full day since the last time you saw me. <laughs> and there are a lot of things that I learned about front disc brakes on a Honda Ruckus. And these are, okay, so I put the front wheel on. You know what? Let me show you. So I think one of the time, last times I saw me, I was putting this on and this whole thing right here. Well, it was leaking all the time and I was getting pretty upset because I kept on turning this and it kept on turning and it wouldn't, it wouldn't lock. Well, you can see a little bit of a scratch here, but I had to hold the bottom part with needle nose. I should have put a towel on it when I was doing it, but I didn't. And it's a minor scratch. You really can't see it too much to turn and tighten this because when I started pumping the brakes, fluid was coming out. I wasn't sure if it was coming out from here, down here, but it definitely wasn't tight enough. This is a 45, not even a 45. It should be, to me it should be a 90 degree because it just comes out. I can't steer it down because it'll hit the body. Um, but this stayed pretty sealed. Then the wire goes in, the hose goes in, and my goodness, the kit that I got, <laughs> the hose was like almost almost four feet long. So imagine from here to here, it's only about what, two, three feet maybe? I had to wind up very stiff hydraulic hosing behind my battery. You can kind of see it here. Um, Without notching it or bending it too much, you, you understand steel braided line is not very easy to bend. So then it comes out here and goes into the caliper, which leads me to my next subject. This is an NCY 10 inch wheel. There is hardly any room for anything underneath here. The nipple, the bleeding thing, like was rubbing the rim. So I had to shave that. And then I put the disc on and then realized I couldn't put the caliper on before I put the disc. So I had to take the disc back off to put the caliper on. So note to those people, put the disc with the caliper on when you mount it to the wheel. And then, I don't know if you can see it. You probably can't. I, I mean, maybe you can. But the spacers weren't enough. There was like maybe like a couple of millimeters worth. So I had to buy washers to put in here. I have probably taken this front wheel on off and on like a hundred times to get it right. Then this side was a little bit off, but then when I put the spacer in, it came out good. Now I have everything in the right direction. I thought maybe I had it mounted backwards. And then I don't know if I told you about the tire, but this tire, was a pain in the butt to put on. Now I got my marlin brackets here, so the only thing I haven't done is the speedo sensor and put the uh, thing on here. So let's summarize real quick. When doing a disc brake conversion, the bleeding process takes a while. Um, you have to pump and then the little bubbles come up in the reservoir. Uh, I got this from Joe S. He helped me a lot because I thought I was doing it wrong. 
And then he said, pump it really fast. So I grabbed the handle and went squeeze, 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 really fast. And then all of a sudden it sucked a whole ton down and a bunch of air came out the top. So I was squeezing it slow. It wasn't, I guess it wasn't creating that vacuum that needed to pull down all the fluid. I really didn't have to open my, uh, my bleeder on the bottom, which by the way was impossible to get to anyway. So over the course of the night, I would pump it and let bubbles come up, pump it. And I'd do that for maybe about five minutes and then I go inside and watch TV and then pump it some more. Now it's very stiff. Uh, I'm very happy with the results on that. Two, make sure that your hose is not extra too long. Uh, just for show, I asked them what's the average size of their cable. It's a 33 inch cable. And he said it's, it's a great size to fit in there. Okay, good. And his has 90 degree angles like I showed you on the top, which makes it easier to use. If you're going to do a disc conversion, and you want a 10 inch wheel, I would think twice about it. The tolerances in there are so tight. Like, <laughs> it's like, it, it's obvious it wasn't, it's not, I mean, it's so tight. So any variance, if you bump something, whatever, might cause something to warp, then it won't fit correctly. Um, so if possible, do a 12 inch wheel. I don't know what a 12 inch wheel on the front with a 10 inch wheel on the back looks like, but um, yeah. This NCY wheel for the front disc conversion that I did, I don't really like it at all, but it's what I had, so yay. Putting on the front tire was hard. I have done it before, so I had a little bit of experience, but you cannot do this without the tire tools, hold on. These tire tools were essential. Now, I also went to go put the uh, wheel bearings in. That wasn't hard, but I have a uh, hydraulic press at the shop, so you'd have to go pay someone to go put the hydraulic, put the, the wheel bearings in. Uh, not everyone can do that, so keep that in mind when you're doing this. Uh, putting in a stem, you cannot transfer the old stem from your wheel to your new wheel if you don't have that. I went to Firestone and uh, I got a free tire stem installed. It's like literally a, near my house, so I just walked over there to have it installed. Those are the lessons that I learned from doing this. Um, it's, it's not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Well, I didn't think it was going to be easy at all, but it's definitely time consuming. Definitely take breaks in the middle whenever you start to get frustrated so you don't get in a hurry to do things. My dog is like trying to work in the garage. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the bike looks like. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to wash it first and then we'll take a look at what it looks like. Okay, well there you have it. The disc brake conversion is complete. Uh, I hope that this 
this isn't a how to install this is more of a what I've learned from <coughs> attempting to install this hopefully uh, people can learn and uh, at least be aware of the pitfalls of what happens whenever you're putting on a front disc brake conversion on Honda, uh, Honda Ruckus. Uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more videos. Um, I'm trying to do more installs and stuff like that, but you know, time constraints and budget budgetary reasons. But anyways, uh, don't forget uh, to help support the channel. I also have t-shirts and I also sell key tags online. Uh, we also have a Patreon page uh, if you want to go ahead and join that and see if you want to support the, the channel. So anyways, thank you for watching and I will see you.